So, um, the idea of the talk, so I will just um, skip me. Oh, no, just before. <laughs> I know you have money, <laughs> and you don't know what to do with it. Yes, of course. So, um, I am a teacher for the uh, University Paris East Manga Valley, UPEM, and the um, it's an uh, engineer school, which is attached to the UPEM. And uh, we want your, um, how do you say in English? I want your money, but <laughs> basically it's the tax apprentissage, what I want. It's something like scholarship taxes, perhaps. Anyway, I want your money. <laughs> so, um, this is a kind of uh, uh, an history of Java. It's not an history of Java, it's my history of Java. Uh, I don't care about the real history. So it will be just my point of view of uh, the, how I have uh, um, life with Java. Um, do you know what this is? This is a Sun 7 project. This is an iPad from the 90s. <laughs> so a kind of iPad from the 90s. And Java was uh, originally developed for this kind of device. Uh, you know the guy, this is James Gosling that uh, start this project, and uh, James was uh, mostly interest, uh, interested by the, uh, how to uh, make something that work well uh, um, with the hardware and the software mixed together. So not something different. Remember that Sun was uh, uh, a hardware company? That's why it dies. <laughs> um, and so we had Java. And Java 1.0, and technically 1.0.2. So 1.0 never survived more than something like three or four days. And Java 1.1. As I say, it's my story, technically. I have started to using Java on HP UX, which was, uh, it's like Linux, but less popular. And uh, the, um, there was no support of uh, HP UX, of, of Java on HP UX at that time. There was only support on uh, Solaris. So basically the idea was, I was using the Netscape uh, virtual machine because Netscape had uh, implemented a virtual, uh, virtual Java machine in their browser and I just take the classes.zip it was a dot .zip at that time from Solaris and just put it in HPVX and it works. It works on compliance. It works, it was enough. Uh, I, I mean, uh, I have decided to use Java because I had a, a courses at my university about C++ and when I finished that courses, uh, I, um, it, it was like, um, I, I, I mean, I, I want to do uh, object things. It, it seems to be the future at that time, it was. And, but, I, uh, I mean, it cannot be C++. C++ cannot be the future. <laughs> it's so awful. So, 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 there is another way. So I'm taking a look to Objective-C at that time and Java. And Java was far, far better because we had applets. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, 
So, uh, for this talk, uh, I will use um, a code, and I will show you how the code evolves with the time. So, what does this code do? I mean, it works. It still works. <laughs> so, it creates a file. It's not a file, but it's named a file. It creates an hash table. It creates a file input stream. It creates a data input stream on this file input stream. And it uses read lines, which is deprecated. Uh, to read the line, it uses a string tokenizer. Do you know how a string tokenizer works? I mean, if you are old, you know. <laughs> so basically, it's like an iterator on the token that you can uh, extract from a line and basically go to the hash table, see if the word exists. If the word exists, you add one to the count. If the word doesn't exist, uh, you just add one. And I close the strings. So the first part is like a frequency map. And the second part, I use a vector. I use a kind of iterator to uh, traverse, to uh, crawl my hash table, and I create an entry which, uh, with the uh, word and its count, I quick sort it and print it. So this is not the real code that works in 1.0 because you need this, you have to re-implement your quicksort. There was no quicksort at that time. And uh, um, you have to have, uh, if, if, if you want uh, something like an inner classes, there is no inner classes in 1.0, so you have to create another classes in the same directory. So, this is the kind of code that I was writing and finding that cool. Okay, okay, it's more than 20 years ago. With the release of 1.1, uh, there was a kind of revolution at that point. And it's not something I have seen as a revolution until I was able to test it, uh, which is uh, Simon Tech create the first JIT for Java. You know the thing that recompile an assembly and just run the assembly at that point. But it was not in the original version, and it was not free. <laughs> at that time, so I haven't used it at that time. Um, it was the first Java 1 edition. Uh, not a lot of people, but something like 1,000. Whoa, it was huge. I mean, the first Java 1 was already huge. Just one year after, you have the creation of the Java community process. The idea is uh, a lot of people are interested in Java, but because they are uh, American company, they have IP issues. <laughs> I, uh, I don't care about these kind of things. But I, I am uh, an academic. But basically, the idea was uh, to be able to develop new spec 
without all the IP issues. That, that was the goal of the Java community process. This thing still exists, more or less. In 1997, uh, uh, you have Swing, yes! Far better than AWT, AWT. Far, 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 far better. You can do anything in Swing. That's, that's the curse of Swing. You can do anything with Swing. But at that point, it was very important because it was the only uh, toolkit that was cross-platform. Uh, being able to develop uh, the, same, uh, the same program uh, on Windows and, and Mac and so on was a very big deal at that point. Uh, from the uh, research side, there is an interesting paper uh, from Martin Odersky, the guy that later found uh, Create Scala, and Philip Wadler. I don't know if you know him, but if you don't know him, just take a look to some uh, any random uh, YouTube video with him. In it. It's, uh, he's a funny guy. And basically, it comes from uh, a more uh, functional uh, community. So in this paper, they argue that uh, there is still some missing thing in Java. Prefix. No, you don't know this paper? The first one. Lambdas. Hey, we can have lambdas in Java. The second one, generics. We can have generics in Java. And the last one, pattern matching. We can have pattern matching in Java. So it was 97, we are, uh, we are still not, uh, we are not, uh, above of this paper. We still don't have pattern matching, but I hope that in 10 years from now... <laughs> um, we'll be at, at that point. So from uh, this language, Pizza was a derived a prototype named Generic Java from these uh, four guys. Uh, so you still have uh, Philip Wadler and Martin Odersky. You have Gilad Braca, I don't know if you know him. He's the guy that was responsible from the, I think, the uh, 1.2, 1.3, 1.4, 1.5, 1.6 .1 perhaps even 1.6 Java language specification. And uh, you have Dave, I don't remember, I will not pronounce his name. Uh, which is still uh, at Oracle. It's basically, you have the, uh, the, the brains and you have the legs. <laughs> and in uh, 98, you have the release of the 1.2 version. Technically, it's not 1.2, it's J2AC 1.2. Uh, the name, the, the code name is Playground. I don't know if you, if you know that. It's Playground. And it was a massive change at that point because we have real connection. We don't have to re-implement quicksort. 
input stream, technically, uh, before you had to do the, uh, the encoding by hand. I mean, Java 1.0, you have to do the encoding by hand. In Java 1.1 and after, you, you can use a reader. We have hash map instead of hash table. No more synchronized each time you try to do something. Whoa, Java was fast at that point. And that's all for, for the change. Uh, but now I have all the code in one slide. A massive change. Slash half of the code. Because it was... I mean, the collection API was really, really, really a big deal at that point. I don't know if you know Josh Blush. I mean, a younger version of Josh Blush. <laughs> <laughs> he, he was at, uh, at DevOps uh, two weeks ago. He is not the only one that have, uh, created the collection API, but he was the one that was put uh, in front to talk about the collection API. Uh, to um, uh, uh, to do talk like how to design an API with Java, how to create libraries, uh, spread the word that an application and an API have not exactly the same design rule and uh, rules and so on. I mean, for me, it was like uh, a kind of discovering I mean, this kind of. Things were known in the small talk community a long, long time before, but I was not, uh, I was too young at that, that point. And with the 1.2, you have a new virtual machine named the exact VM. Does somebody know why? It was called the exact VM. It's not VM. Because the previous one was approximative. The? Sorry? The previous one was approximative. Yes, there was something that was fuzzy in the previous <laughs> one. <laughs> the GC was fuzzy. The, uh, the question on my stack, do I have a pointer or an int was fuzzy. Because, mm, it seems to be like pointer. Let's consider it as a pointer. If it's not, it's not too, too, too bad. I mean, you will still have object in your heap that you should not have, but okay. So, so it, it was a kind of revolution. We had a new generational GC. I mean, a modern GC, like not in Go. They still not have a generational GC. <laughs> and there was another uh, uh, big, uh, in my opinion, big uh, announcement from James Gosling. <laughs> We can have value type in Java. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and we add it in C sharp first. But basically, what is a value type? The idea of a value type is you put it like a class, but it be of like an int. So it doesn't allocate itself on heap, but on stack and things like this. It has to be immutable. It's something that C Sharp uh, got it wrong. Because if it's immutable, 
it can be stack allocated or directly allocated in the register. Because it's immutable, you don't know. Or you don't want to know. So the JIT can do the optimization. It's not like a struct in C. It's better. Because if you have a struct in C, when you call a method, you have to duplicate it. So basically, you have to, have to stack allocate it. In, um, I mean, we will have value type in Java. There is currently a prototype and another one that will uh, arrive soon. I currently work on that kind of things. Uh, basically, the idea is things like optional or uh, local that time should be value type. Um, there is no null for a value type. So please, please, please don't put null inside something that you type. Optional something. It will not work. Your code will break. That's your fault. You haven't read the Java doc. You know, it's, it's written in the Java doc. So it's true. We have the creation of Apache, the Apache Foundation. Technically, the Apache is a uh, uh, web uh, server was existing before. But you have the creation of the Apache Foundation, which was really important. I mean, um, at least at that time, it was um, the main foundation for the open source Java code. When you wanted something, it was usually easier to first use, uh, to look for something in the Apache uh, Foundation. Remember, it's before Google. Now you can Google things, or you can stack overflow things. <coughs> before, we had to look in the Apache repository. And that's all for the 1.2. We go to the 1.3 version. There is something interesting with the 1.3, which is there is no change in the language in 1.3. Why? Because Java was slow. I mean, it was not slower than before, <laughs> it was still slow, because the GC improved, but for uh, most of the people, there was still no jet at that point. Everybody was still using the interpreter. So we had, in 1.3, the idea was, don't change the language, only change the platform use a new VM. Whoa, we had just one, a new one just before. We are rich. Use a new VM. The hotspot VM. Historically, the hotspot VM was uh, a self VM. I don't know if you know of self. It's like a JavaScript with a weird syntax. It's the opposite. Okay. JavaScript was created with the semantics of self, the prototype things for uh, looking for uh, fields and, uh, and function. So it was a self virtual machine that was uh, used to uh, uh, run the strong talk language, which was a language invented by Sun and mostly used by Sun. And uh, I don't know if you know these guys. The first one, uh, we don't pronounce their name, <laughs> but the first one is the one which, which was uh, uh, later the guy that create the uh, Google hardware. The whole Google hardware was created by him. And Lars Bach 
is the guy that have implemented uh, all the uh, JavaScript VM you have in Chrome, the V8 uh, JavaScript uh, VM. And you have a, a PhD student at that time named Cliff Click that reused uh, um, uh, a representation of, of, of program uh, from IBM from a, 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 a paper I think it's from 99 or something like this. That says something like, hey, if we represent code like this, we can do a lot of operation on it. Uh, things like uh, removing common uh, superexpression and things like this. So, um, uh, if you take a look now, all compiler LLVM GCC and use this representation. Use the C of node representation. I mean, V8 use the C of node representation and so on. So, uh, Lapel VM use the C of node representation. But at that point in time, it was something like a foolish idea to say. Uh, we will use uh, uh, a compiler technology that was uh, not used since 10 years because it's slow and we will use it in the Java JIT. Something that should be fast because we are transforming bytecode to native code at runtime. And it works, and it works perfectly. And Java was fast. And, I mean, not in the mind of all the people at that time. Java was still slow. You have a kind of a time of propagation in the mind of the people. But it was really fast. My favorite <coughs> books was written at that time, Effective Java. I mean, it's my favorite book for several reasons. One of them is I can say to my student, just read it. <laughs> I'm less interesting than Facebook. It's the a, a third edition of Facebook. Uh, it was at that time that we had Eclipse. Uh, historically, Eclipse, uh, so Eclipse was uh, created by IBM. Uh, uh, historically, it was uh, something to run uh, a, a specific small talk language named Visual Age and they just retarget it and rewrite it uh, fully uh, in Java but not using Swing. Exactly at the same time we have IntelliJ. I mean it's something like you have three or four months um, between the the release of the two of the two IDE. It was a time where Java started to be fast. So we can write an IDE. And we go to Merle. You can still Google because at that time it didn't exist. You can still Google for Merle something. Merle something. Merely language feature, and you will find things more than with, with the 1.4 uh, value. If you try to Google it, it's something amazing. The, the, the name of the the code name was more important than the version of Java. Um, Merlin is very important because it's the first release that introduced the new I.O. Yeah, new I.O. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> All the byte buffer selectors, socket channel, and, and so on things were introduced in 1.4. So at that point, people were able to write modern uh, web server, uh, 
exactly it's not true because it was full of bugs, but <laughs> at least the API was there. For my code, what can I do? Oh, I don't know if you see in, in, in the while you have split. This is the introduction of the string.split. No string tokenizer, string tokenizer anymore. I mean, a string tokenizer was faster. But you don't care. It's so easy to use this. So it's the first time you see in the, uh, for, again, it's my opinion, it's the first time you see introduction in the API of Java of something that was slow, but for the user. I mean, we are fast now. We have a new VM, a new, new VM, which is really fast. We don't care that much about performance. We can now talk to our user and say, this is what you want. And this is the, basically the only change. Uh, they tried to change the model at that point in 1.4, saying we will introduce new API in 1.4.1 and in 1.4.2, and, but, but it was a kind of mess. Because for most of the people, they just uh, uh, install 1.4. And so you had code that was not running because it was requiring 1.4.2 or something like this. So they backpedals on, on, on this idea to introduce new API dot release. We have an essay from uh, Richard uh, Stallman. Obviously, uh, this guy is always right but something like five or ten years in advance, usually. That said, basically, if you develop in Java, even if you develop an open source thing, because Java is not open source, it's not open source. What you are developing in the Apache Foundation, Apache Foundation, sorry, it's not free. And he was right. We have a new version, Tiger. I really like the code name. I mean, the code name more than the version. You can see the version, it's still J, J2SE 5.0. It's September uh, 2004, and what we have in Tiger is generics. Technically, we have two things, <coughs> generics and annotations. Okay. Annotations was big at that point. And for library that doesn't use annotation, we, you had a new library that was created using annotation, and the old API was not used anymore, just because they used annotation. You can see it in, uh, with uh, JUnit. You had JUnit free with no annotation. Uh, uh, a French guy comes with TestNG. I don't know if you remember. And the big difference with TestNG, so, so the, the name of the guy is Cedric Bust. And with TestNG, you just have to put annotation. And it just works. So GUnit has to do a GUnit 4 with exactly the same annotation. So my code is fully changed. Technically, if I take a look to the code, I have added more keystrokes. I have some square brackets for hash map, but in a sense I have less cast 
in it. I have uh, another feature, auto-boxing, which means that I can use, oh, there is a bug in it. Interesting. Can you spot the bug? Yes, integer one. It should be one L. Otherwise, it can be anything. Uh, yeah. I mean, it will work. It's just, it's not a bug. It's just, um, you should, when you have count equals equals, I mean, it will work. The code will work. But in, for, uh, at that time, the idea was if you use autoboxing, you should be explicit on the type of the thing you autobox. So if I take a look now, my array list of map on tree or string long is awfully long. I have a long, uh, I have to declare more things, but I have no cast anymore. And, and if I trust all the people that develop libraries, that themselves trust all the people that they use, uh, all, the, all the dependencies they use. I mean, if nobody put a suppress, um, a suppress warning somewhere, <laughs> the code is safe. That was the promise at that point generates an annotation. What I have missed? What I have missed? The, the other big things of... Hmm? Uh, no, no, no. I mean, Java EE. Enum was a stupidity. <laughs> Java EE, there is no Java EE. Anyway. <laughs> and, um, no, no, no. Um, I'm still not sure that having enums was a good fix. People, because people start to encode hierarchy in enums. Which is great when you write it, but it's awful when you try to refactor it. Um, so let's say that enums doesn't exist. I mean, uh, for, for the history, the enum things was implemented in one week. The whole things. Basically, it was uh, Neil Gafter, the, 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 the man that was re responsible for the, um, the compiler, and George Rush that decide that if they implement it, Sun will agree to put it in, uh, uh, in Java. And they were right. Java util concurrent. So this is Dougley, again, young. Now he has uh, gray hairs. And um, uh, generics was a very, very big deal for uh, library implementers. Because generics was something awful. Basically, if you want to have generics, you need to change the class to declare a T, and you need to change all the code that use that class. So it's a change on both sides. I mean, this is the kind of change that you know take a long, long, long time. And if you take a look, you still have libraries that have no generics in it. Perhaps not a lot, but uh, by example, you have a library called decom that is able to decode uh, images that you use when you do a scanner for checking if you have cancer or not. But this library has, uh, was not changed from 2001 or something like this. So perhaps you have the 
a concert just because of its degree. <laughs> I hope not. For us, it's the opposite. You think you don't have a concert? Java 6. The idea, oh, it's not 1.6, it's 6. Java 6. Mustang. Tiger. Mustang. Um, the idea of Java 6 was exactly the same uh, with uh, of uh, um, Java 3. Just stabilize the API. Don't change the things. Technically, there was one change in the language. Who knows? One change in the, in the language. It was the guy that was responsible for the compiler. He does the change and, and say nothing to nobody <laughs> until the discover. <laughs> You can put uh, at override on an interface of a, a method that implements method of an interface. In Java 5, it was only for class. If you uh, extend from a class, not from an interface. This is the only change. Uh, technically, it's not fully true. The other change is. Um, if you have a stupid encoding in the middle of your code uh, before JavaScript was trying to uh, do something and <laughs> with uh, Java 6, so just uh, emit an error and complain. What the fuck is this? And Java 6 was very important for me because it was the first time I had a feature I have developed in Java 6. This is also the first time I have introduced a security bug in <laughs> Java. It's not the last time. It's the first time. But I, I am the guy that written a new string that takes an array of bytes and a chart set and create a string before you had to pass the chart set as a string. I mean, the name of the encoding and not the chart set object. And at that point, Sun was dying. It's 2006. 2006, um, the, the, the internet bubble has, has burst. Sun has no uh, client anymore because Sun had, has a lot of startup as client. I mean. Startup that was uh, creating, um, let's say, something virtually, so nothing. And uh, Sun was not able uh, to um, uh, to uh, sell its hardware because of Linux, basically. So, in a kind of, I mean, it was really a nice thing. They decide, while dying, to open source Java, saying Java is more important than Java. Uh, Java st uh, st uh, st uh, should still exist, even if some die. So Java was open source. Uh, the announcement is uh, the uh, 13th November 2006, but it takes something like one year uh, to have uh, to have the things, and even some part was uh, not uh, uh, open sourced, uh, mostly uh, the graphic part, because it was uh, a C code provided by a. A third, uh, a third party uh, uh, company that weirdly uh, 
didn't want to open source their software. When um, the Open GDK was created, it was uh, something like the Open GDK 7 uh, beta 20. I would say 20, something like this. So they didn't open source the 6th version, but the 7th version. We, we, we press a big deal. Nobody wants to use the OpenGDK 7. I mean, it's a beta thing. So Red Hat come with uh, uh, a weird, weird plan. I mean, <laughs> it's Red Hat. Let's say like this. They decide to create an OpenGDK 6. And how to create an OpenGDK 6 from an OpenGDK 7? You just remove all the patch and you will have no bugs. I mean, <laughs> uh, 20 beta release of Java, you have one release every uh, week, usually. So it's six months of development. So they remove six months of development. Um, basically, the Open GDK 6 uh, was a kind of monster um, because, uh, I mean, Red Hat does the job of uh, making it working on server and it works well on server, but on anything but server, let's say desktop or something like this, it was never really tested. And it was very awful because it means that the first contact people had with an open GDK was something that was not working on, your, on their desktop. Not something in 2017, I don't know if you know, but Red Hat decided to not maintain the open GDK 6 anymore. So Azure, with Microsoft, you can still have uh, the, um, the image on Azure. Uh, start to take leadership of the OpenGDK 6, which means that the Franken monster, <laughs> which is the OpenGDK 6, is still maintained today. At that time, Paris drug is born. This is the old logo. And Andre is born. Good news, bad news. Mm, good question. Um, Oracle decided to uh, buy Sun. Um, basically, um, there was a choice between two companies, IBM or Oracle. And most of the people at Sun decide to not go uh, with IBM. Not to choose Oracle. It's not the same kind. So, Oracle decide to sue Google. First move. The war run check issue. I don't know if you have followed the first trail, but it's something which is really, really great if you are not an American. Uh, basically, um, they find something like five or six lines of code that was exactly the same between Android and uh, the Oracle GDK in millions and it was a run check function something that check if you are in the bound and why they find that because of Josh Blush because Josh Blush write 
the code in the GDK and move to Google when it writes code in Android. So basically, um, uh, during the trial, he was uh, himself uh, copying. Uh, it was uh, himself copying. It was. I mean, he, he writes the wrong check in the GDK. He writes wrong check in uh, the Android, and it was the same. Yeah, it's the same guy. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> So yeah, George Bloch. I don't know if there are other people in the in the industry. Uh, I mean, uh, I think he he didn't pay something. Uh, he just has his uh, finger slapped, basically by the judge for copying himself, <laughs> which is stupid. Uh, at the same point, we had the kind of. So the fight of the closure at that point. I don't know if you remember 2006. We had first free proposal of how to implement lambdas in Java. At that point, Martin Odaski, uh, from a long, long time ago, decided to fork Java to its own language because Java was too slow to adopt what he wanted. So the first thing Martin Odesky had in Scala was lambdas and Patamashi. So we have three different proposals for lambdas. We have the PGGA proposal from Gilad Braca, Neil Gafter, James Gosling, and Peter von der Eye. Uh, basically, the guy that are either responsible from the spec of the compiler, you have the CICE proposal from Bob Lee, uh, Doug Lee and Josh Blush, the guys that were responsible from the API, the collection API. You have FCM by uh, Stephen Colburn and Stephen Schultz, that are basically the guys that want to use the API in a certain way. The user. And in uh, 2009, you have Mike Reynolds that proposed another API. He said two things. He said, one, Java will have lambdas, will have closure. And the other is, this is what I propose. Uh, it it appeared uh, two or three days later. He said that he just tried the proposal during the flight <laughs> from the uh, US to uh, to Belgium. So, so this, uh, this proposal was not very interesting, but he, say, uh, he said uh, we have to work together to have a lambda, uh, a lambda uh, to have lambdas in Java. Do you know which one when? Come on. None of them. It was a kind of mix between, uh, basically a mix of the second and the third one. Ah, this is my, uh, Mark Reynolds. And we go to Java 7, Dolphin. Uh, at that point, nobody knows that Java 7 was Dolphin because uh, the Oracle management didn't care about the code name. So basically, the code name here is the, the code name that Sun give at before trying for Java 7. And Java 7 was a kind of mixed release, because it take a lot of time to not implement the two things that were reported at that time, modules, and lambdas. <laughs> but we, if you take a look to the code, it's still the, the size of the code is reduced because we now have 
the try with resources. And we have more than the try with resources. We now have the java.nio.file.finds. You see the files things? So now you can create a bufferhead reader in one line <laughs> and not in two lines. And it's very important because if you create in two lines, you can have a problem in the first line, like an out of memory error, and you will forget to close the whole thing. Um, in Java 7, we have Invoke Dynamic. I mean, Invoke Dynamic was something very weird. It's the support of uh, dynamic language in the Java virtual machine. Uh, nobody cares about Invoke Dynamic at the point it goes out because uh, it was um, Invoke Dynamic was created when there was a competition between Sun and Microsoft. Microsoft decided to develop an extension of C Sharp for the dynamic language, technically the .NET language platform. So Sun decided to to have its own things. Exactly, the me too things. Uh, this is the guy that was responsible for the Invoke Dynamic things. Uh, we start, uh, I was in the group that created Invoke Dynamic, we start as something like we were seven, and four years later we were three. <laughs> three people. which will be interesting uh, later. But basically, Invoke Dynamic is used uh, when you create a lambda. Yeah. IBM um, um, had a kind of secret um, relation with Oracle, and uh, Oracle uh, was able to uh, make IBM to dump the project Harmony, which was the, uh, the base of Android. I mean, all the Java long, Java util things was coming from IBM. So it, it, was, it was a kind of way to uh, uh, try to uh, cut the legs of Android, even if Android really small legs. Uh, Azul and micro, uh, Microsoft decide to create Zulu. I, I don't know if you know what Zulu is. It's just the open GDK with a, a sticker. I think it's <laughs> Zulu. It's exactly the same thing. We have the release of Java 8 Spider again. Old name from, uh, from Sun. And whoa, we now have Lambda, and we not only have Lambdas, but we have APIs that use Lambdas. We have strings. So doing a grouping by is just calling grouping by, which is cool. And the whole code is very reduced. If you just take a look to the code, uh, on a pattern, you have a split a string, which is able to split a text with uh, a specific uh, regex things. So you just say, you just say, I take the line, I split them using the space, and I group them and count them. Just a declarative API. You don't want to know how it's implemented. I mean, you don't know how it's implemented, right? And you don't care. Mm -hmm. And you have exactly the same. You have default comparator, so you can say list dot sort. Uh, we have lambdas and we have default method. And default method are very important because you can upgrade your API. You can upgrade your interface. So we have list.sort, 
you compare by value in reverse order. <coughs> we have learned that. And this is Brian Goetz. Yeah, no? And this is the guy responsible to uh, take all the proposal and try to do a mix, um, uh, try to uh, herd everyone. And Andre decide to use the Open GDK in Andre Nougat. Nobody use it, no, but I mean, how many people? Use Android M. In the, you don't care. No. It's important. It means that you, uh, I mean, currently a lot of library uh, are still 1.6 compatible because of that. Because otherwise you can't use it on Android. At some point we will have to go further. We have now the release of Java 7, no code name. We have modules, I really like this clipboard. I mean, Duke is inside the module, he has no way, he dies. <laughs> <laughs> and um, you have a new string concatenation. I have written the first prototype of the string concatenation. That's why I put it on the slide. Well, it's just string concatenation. If you take, if you take a look, you, you first calculate the size of the string and then uh, store the value in it. And it's far more, more efficient than using a string buffer or a string builder. We have the uh, IBM. Uh, VM that was open source, open G9. So now you should use it in your CI just to test. You, you don't have to use it in production, just test. You should test. I mean, um, usually as, uh, the VM use less memory than hotspot, but it's a little slower. But we have more choice. And you have the release of Java 10 or 18.3. Oh, the code is even simpler now. We can write var and it works. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, you may not. Um, Want it, but but, but it's, it's like const in C. Once you have it somewhere, people will use it anywhere in your software. So you have to uh, be aware of that. Either you pass all your code source to using var or you don't use it. But if you try to mix things, the code is really, really ugly. In the next September, we will have Java 11. It's the code that works with Java 11. Can you spot the difference? You have a path.off. It's not passes.get. Really big change. <laughs> no, it's the string. You have the quote. Things we now have, uh, um, perhaps it will be in 12. It's not clear that it will be 11 in 11, but you have a way to quote a block of string without having to go uh, to use plus and things like this. Yes, so you can write all the code in one expression, like in Python, and I will just finish. Um, this is all the GDK that support uh, 64 bits, not 32, 64 bits for uh, 5 to 11, and this is the runtime 
of all the code <coughs> from 1.0 to 11, the one I have shown you. You can see that the first one is really slow, and it's a deprecated API. Nobody cares about trying to optimize it. Um, you can see that in 1.4, when you use split, it's usually slower, but you don't care. <laughs> you can see that if you use a stream, it's even slower, but you don't care. <laughs> and you can see something which is uh, Java 9 is the one in... Uh, um, um, well, you see it. And you have Java 10 and 11, you can see that the stream are a little more optimized. With, uh, 10 and, 11. and that's all 